Now, this is a point I was kind of handing out a minute ago. Know that all representative systems will have similar nuances, trend following, reversion to the mean, et cetera. So ask yourself, what is your system? And all systems fit into a category. I recently got a, a letter <laughs> from someone who was wondering if I could help them do a little programming and they're doing some system development. This is a client that I've had for on and off for years and I haven't gotten back in touch with him. But if he happens to be watching tonight, I would tell him that there's a 99% chance that your system is gonna look a lot like any other system out there. It could all be boiled down to, are you a trend follower or not, okay? And then within the trend follower, different sects, for instance, like breakout breakouts are gonna, are gonna work great to get you into every trending market there is, but your accuracy is gonna be abysmal and you're gonna lose more often than you win. Maybe longer term, it'll work out. So along those lines, for instance, reversion to the bean is usually highly accurate. And the thing is, it'll work until it don't. It's a great way to have a very brief but brilliant career on Wall Street. The reversion to the mean systems tend to blow up. Selling naked options will work until it don't. And there was a, I don't want to be shot on Friday, believe me, I'm not, but there was some woman that was famously interviewed on the on YouTube. You can still find it out there if you dig around. I could help you find it. And uh, not to take anything away from her, but I think she ended up, she started options trading, selling naked options. And then before you knew it, she was running like $100 million and then it all blew up. And I think she's in a little bit of trouble for that. So it will work until it don't. Believe me, I've, I've, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and I have um, the scars to prove it. Two drink minimum on that. Now, William Eckert comes to mind, the desire to maximize the number of winning trades or minimize the number of losing trades. And, you know, that's important. I, I always kind of gloss over that, minimize the number of losing trades, because you don't think of that as a, a grail hunt, but you start programming and noodling and with, with things, and you keep trying to, oh, we got this loser. Well, if this parameter here was set to this, we wouldn't have that losing trade. Well, I look, kind of look like, what's this, Lewis Black? But in the future, there's going to be something else that's going to cause a losing trade. Before you know it, that's where the curve fitting cuts it, comes in. But anyway, the desire to maximize the number of winning trades or minimize the number of losing trades works against the trader. The success rate of trades is the least important performance statistic and may even be inversely related to performance, okay? You could eat like a bird and shit like an elephant and probably do really well for a long time. That means that you're taking little, 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 bitty, 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 tiny profits, okay? And then pff, you take a huge loss. As I was going live here, I was just kind of checking in on my Facebook group before coming live. And in, in my feed, somebody's like 80 to 90% day trade signals. Like, okay, well, they probably are 80 to 90% accurate. But what they're not telling you is what happens when you lose on a trade. And just kind of random thought, I remember a while back, somebody sent out their their track record to the clients or whatever, and they sent me a copy. And so I did the math on it. They were profitable, but I did the math on it. And they were making, on average, five cents a trade, literally five cents a trade on average. And that's kind of scary because if your execution isn't completely right, and let's say you lose a dollar on a trade, well, now it's going to take 20 trades on average to make up for that $1 loss. What feels good over the short term is often detrimental over the longer term when it comes to systems. And believe me, I've said this before, I've gotten more pure reversion to the mean type clients than any other prior methodology combined. Now, pure trend following, something like the turtles did and a lot of my system testing way back in the day, I, I got out every technical analysis book I could find and went through every indicator and multiple bastardizations thereof. 
and the number that just kept coming up, you know, somewhere between like 22 and 30 percent accurate. 30 percent is actually high for a trend following system. And the drawdowns were absolutely abysmal. Now, as I say quite often, not to take anything away from the turtles, because I think what they did was fantastic, but they happen to be in the right place at the right time. And since a lot of the turtles have no are no, are no longer successful because they were in the right place at the right time and their simple systems worked really really well but the drawdowns were were very large even back then even when the times were good in fact they actually discovered about halfway through the program that at the rate they were going they were on the cusp of blowing up and they immediately scaled back their position sizing and then afterwards again a lot of them did blow up now Longer term trends are where the money is, okay? And by the way, in order to profit from a trade, you have to capture a trend. You have to capture a trend. You have to sell higher than you buy or cover lower than you short. That move is a trend. Now, short term systems, you're going to get a little bit more accurate with those. But the problem is, it, it doesn't make enough and shit still happens, okay? So this, I guess this gentleman's making five cents a trade. Again, if he gets spanked on one trade for a buck, this would take 20 trades to come back. So bad things can still happen even over the short term. People think, well, I'm only gonna be in the market for a few days. Well, you know, as long as a crash doesn't happen in those few days or the Fed does something or make it an off the cuff remark or whatever, in this day and age, it seems like there's a lot of uh, idiots out there, but that's another story. Now, my system, so to speak, is short-term plus long-term. It's a bit of a hybrid approach, and the money management is ingrained into it, or integrated into it. I don't know the correct terminology there. So it still has some of the nuances of short-term trading. And some of the nuances of longer term trading, we still have drawdowns. We still have extended periods of flat time, which believe me, suck. <laughs> I can always tell we're getting ready to just knock it out of the park. You know, when everybody starts quitting the service, it's like, okay, we're getting closer and closer. Now, in general, it, it keeps you in the game until you knock it out of the park. So if you make it, if you make the initial profit target and stop out, you do that a few times. And before you know it, you got, your account's two or three percent higher, maybe four percent higher, and then you get whacked on a couple of them. Now that four percent just evaporated, and you're back, you're barely above water, or then you start going into a drawdown, and it can be tough. But eventually, you start catching a few really good stocks. The market conditions overall improve, or the sector conditions improve, and then one or two begin to take off, and then that makes your whole year. And it's a tough way to trade, and, I'm, and I've tried everything. And as tough as it is, it's the best thing that I have found after many, many, many years of searching. Now, one thing you have to ask yourself is, can you follow it, okay? So let's say you come up with some sort of system or methodology. The question you have to ask yourself is, can you follow it? And I met someone once, it was actually Jake Bernstein down in Australia. And he, at this conference, we were on a panel together, and he said that he had this system that he just couldn't follow it, but he knew there was an edge, and he paid someone to follow it. And he said, if you don't follow it to a T, I'm going to fire you. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And that's the problem we're seeing now. It's like I tell everybody, be patient, be patient, sit on your hands, sit on your hands, sit on your hands. Everybody gives up, and then what happens? The market takes off. Now, I've got a, a folder with my Eckhart quotes that I'm going to work into books and stuff. And I just read the first couple of lines, and I knew that if I went down that rabbit hole, this would be a, a William Eckhart presentation. But I thought it was easy. I thought it was kind of interesting, this, this little quote sort of dovetails in what we're talking about. It's much easier to learn what you should do in trading than do it. Amen. <laughs> Good systems tend to violate normal human tendencies okay if you took your par partial profits off and you're trailing your stop and you're letting that stop widen out and that market starts rolling over 
okay? It's going to be really tempting to get out long before that stop is hit. When that market starts banging out new highs, it's going to be really tempted, tempting to mentally monetize that and not let that draw down into your account. So it's tough, okay? And I don't want to make it sound like it's easy, but the, the systems that tend to work the best are the hardest to follow, I think is what he's saying. And, and I fully agree. It's hard to trend follow. It's a lot easier to, you know, get into something and then flip it out and then, you know, do all this other crazy stuff than it is to actually follow a longer term trend. Now, one thing you want to do is play devil's advocate. And I've been sent hundreds of systems over the years and or methodologies or whatever. Well, I'm selling these calls and then I'm selling these puts and then all this other stuff. And I always tell them the same thing. It's like, well, you know, that makes me nervous. But I tell you what, you trade that system for two years, okay? And then email me and tell me how you're doing. And knock on, well, not knock on wood, but uh, so far, and I've been publicly doing this 20 something years, over 25 years, I guess. Not one person has emailed me back after two years with any system that has that blow up characteristic. Now, I will tell you this, I've seen stuff, and again, two drink minimum, <laughs> some horror stories, but I've seen some stuff work for like 20 years and then blow up. If that characteristic is there, it's there. One thing that I wrote about recently, and I don't think it's an original thought, so if I could find the original thought, that would be great. If, if somebody knows, leave me a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. But it's like a hundred chambered revolver with one bullet in it, okay? And you're playing Russian roulette. Well, the chances of that bullet getting hit, you know, when you pull the trigger, they're never nil, you know? Even if you like you just, okay, make it completely random, it's never nil, okay? There's always a little chance in there. And statistically, it could go a long, long time before you get killed, so to speak. So make sure you're playing devil's advocate. When you're looking at your, your charts, go in and look at when it works, but then seek out times when it doesn't work. What book or the Eckerd quotes from? I picked them up from a variety of books. Um, I like Curtis Face book on the turtles, I think it's the way of the turtles. Like I said a million times, I, I said, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna watch those, um, I'm not gonna read those turtle books, you know, <laughs> cause I just thought it was kind of dumb. Everybody's trying to capitalize and make money off of them. And, uh, but I, I thought that it was interesting. Curtis Faith wrote a book and then uh, Larry Williams told me, Larry Williams, Larry McMillan, sorry. These are the Larry's I know, <laughs> I know them both. I, little, I know McMillan better, uh, but Larry told me, Larry McMillan told me, he goes, you know, it's actually pretty good. He talked about, Curtis Faye talked about how they had a ping pong table in the back of the office. They play ping pong when there's nothing going on. And it sounded kind of interesting. It turns out it was a pretty good book. And if Larry McMillan tells me to read a book, I'm going to read it. I was just reading his options book earlier today. I know you want to party with me. <laughs> But it was pretty good. So that's the way of the turtle. Uh, it also read, if you go to daveland.com slash books dash two dash read, Curtis Faith's book, Trading from the Gut, is pretty good too. And I think he quotes Eckerd in there. Uh, Eckerd is in one of the market wizards. So that's probably where some of the quotes come from. But yeah, I've got a I've got a couple of pages of quotes from him. And I just I guess I collected them over the years. And you know, you can go to like um there's quote websites and you can put his name in. 